Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's talk about speech to text and working with transcriptions. Well, automated speech to text is finally here inside Premiere Pro. So if you've got a Creative Cloud account, you have speech to text, and that will convert with unbelievable accuracy any spoken text, spoken words into text. Incredible. In, I think right now it's 13 different languages. So it's really remarkable. It uh, uses a third party technology and then it uses Adobe Sensei, which is their AI technology to time things out, time out the blocks um, for uh, playback. So I have a whole tutorial on working with uh, using this to create captions and subtitles. I wanted to concentrate more on how just having a transcript can help you. And uh, let's transcribe this uh, interview with uh, Jonathan Van Bilsen, which I'll put a link to his fantastic travel uh, channel below. So let's have a look at this. So I'm going to go to the captions workspace. It's an easy way to get to the text panel. The, the text panel is not called the captions panel because it's more than just captions. It's captions and transcriptions. You'll now see the transcribe sequence button is available. And when you click on that, you pick the track that you want to use, either the complete mix or a specific audio track. You can transcribe or you can pick the language. You can transcribe the in and out point, merge transcriptions, and also opt in for uh, recognizing when different speakers are talking. I only have one person, so I'll click transcribe. And Premiere Pro will start the auto transcription. It will uh, render out the audio upload that and begin transcribing it. And this is going to take five minutes. I'll speed this up. If you are, uh, if you did opt in to recognize the speakers, you might see a very curious dialog box where it's not available in the state of Illinois. Hey, Adobe has to do the right thing and abide by whatever laws, but apparently in Illinois, knowing which speaker is talking is not allowed. So I don't know. Okay, so let's speed this up. All right, so there it is, it's done. You notice we're in the transcript section and right now, it obviously doesn't know the name of the speaker, but if I click on here and click edit speakers and click on the little pencil and I can name this Jonathan. Save that and it will show up. If you've transcribed multiple speakers, then you can edit each individual name. So now that we have this, what can we do with this? Well, if your edit is long, this really doesn't make sense if it's a 30 second piece, but if this is a long interview, 10, 20 minutes, an hour or whatever, and you've got to find this, um, it, it's it find different words in here, it's going to be easier just searching this. So I'm going to search up at the top for Armenia. And you can see as I get close, it's highlighting both of these words and it takes me to that pl place in the timeline. So if I hit play, I think uh, going you see it gives me a little pre-roll so I can see, Georgia and then I'll go to the next one down here, same thing, hit play, Armenia. and it plays. Uh, it's, a little, uh, it's a little different. A little. Let's go to Jerusalem. There's Jerusalem. Just like before, hit play. So fortunately, the very first one I did, so which was see uh, to Jerusalem, was um, it went over. This is very useful if you're cutting feature films for television. And uh, if it's broadcast television, there might be uh, the need to remove profanity. So you can search for all of the profanity and find it. So let's look at exporting this out because that's another use. Now we could just create captions if, if we want. Like I said, I've got a whole tutorial on that. But if we click in the three dots, uh, we can retranscribe it if there'd been a change. We can export. 
We can also display the pauses as this ellipsis. That's what three dots are called. And this keeps it in there, but if there are many pauses, instead of it looking like there are no words in there, that gets um, added in. So there's an, a transcript, or you can export to a text file. I'll show you both. You can also disable auto-scrolling if that's uh, something you don't want to have happen. You can split and merge these segments too. So let's look at exporting these. So when you choose transcript, you'll notice it's a PR transcript file. I'll show you what that looks like. We can also import a transcript too and export to a text file, and that's a .txt file. So let me show you those. So this is the text file. And it's just that. It's the same as what you're seeing over in the transcript minus the speaker name. The, the, uh, trans the Premiere Pro transcript can't be previewed. It's only understood by the transcript, the text panel in Premiere Pro, not by anything else. So you can't easily see what's inside. Now, if you do want timing, as you see in this example here, there's the words and the timing for each one. The transcript does not have that. I don't know, maybe that'll have that option in the future, but that is a subtitle uh, file, the SRT file. Um, and I exported that out after making a caption, choosing the default is an SRT and you can export that out. So if you need that timing in there, then you could do it with that. So you could use this for um, exporting out the text and, and you could uh, find where to place B-roll, you know, if you gotta read this text-wise. This is some industry standard ways of, of using a transcript. Uh, you can create a shot list from it. Um, you can also um, use this as kind of like a, a paper edit. So some people would do that. I just look at the gosh darn video and find out where I'm putting it. But Using transcripts to help you edit video is really uh, powerful, especially in documentaries with lots of dialogue and lots of, of uh, separate interviews and lots of different shots, different people. It can be a bit of a nightmare trying to find uh, where that is. So check it out. It's now inside uh, Premiere Pro. It's kind of like Phrase Find uh, in Avid, except you don't have to wait. Once it, it uh, transfers that, it's all inside the program. Um, and it doesn't cost anything extra. This is now included in Premiere Pro. So if you needed text, speech to text, and you need to bring it into something else, InDesign or somewhere, uh, web design and, and put it on a page, you can use Premiere Pro to do your speech to text. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us some more, you can do that through videorevealed.com slash shop, place where you can donate once or monthly, any amount, lots of free stuff that you can download and buy. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to alert you to the tools that just emerged inside Premiere Pro so you can take advantage of it.